Hello, we're back. I'm Joe. I'm Gav. We're from Leicester Vintage Toy Shop. We couldn't wait until Series 2. No, and apparently neither could you. So what's special about this? Matt, roll, roll the, the titles. titles. Welcome to this Toy Shop on Tour special, where we're coming to visit you, the collectors. We want to see how you guys do it. See the toys that you're passionate about. Dig out those treasures, make some new friends, and go and revisit some old friends along the way. You know the drill. Action figures. Dolls. Star Wars. Weird stuff. Transformers. Aliens. Thundercats. Bootlegs. He-Man. So join me, Joe, Gav, and Matt the cameraman as we go back on the trail to uncover some grails. Here we are, back on the road. On me. Oh, that is about time. I know, it feels like it's been ages, doesn't it? So what are we going to go and see? So we're going to go and see uh, Mark and Karen, they're pretty much the first stop on our collector focus. Oh. So we're going to see their collection. Okay, cool. What's he collect? He started out with Star Wars and then sort of branched out. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit of everything. There's going to be something for you, there's going to be stuff that I'm going to like. Oh, okay, cool. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm, I'm excited about it. So this it's one. like, so we're going to see a collection. Yeah. So we're not necessarily buying anything. No, no, I mean... It's just the, purely a collection. Purely a collection. OK, cool. That's kind of the <laughs> yeah. idea. I mean, if there's stuff to buy, you know <laughs> I'm going to be in for it. He's always collected really clean, really minty, mint, mint stuff. Just grail pieces, that's what it's all about, oh, finding those grails. The I, grails. Think, I think we might <laughs> find some straight away here. Yeah, this is it, I think. There we go. Yep, looks like the place. It's very nice. Excited. Hello, gentlemen. Mark. How you doing? You I'm very right? well. How are you? Good to see you, mate. Come in. Can we come in? Come in. Thank you very. Can oh, we come man. in and bother you? How are oh, you doing? Welcome guys? to the dark side. Okay? Yeah. Hello. Hello, Hello Matt, the cameraman. Ooh. Good Hello. to see you. And you. Mind that step. Ooh. Oh man. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is bad. Already, look. Yeah. When do you see one of them boxed? You don't. Not very often, anyway. Oh, man, look at these 12 inch. Look how nice that is, displayed with hand. Yeah, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? And the coin. That looks fantastic. Got the different variants as well. Yeah. I mean, I like to get stuff out and handle it, I've got to say. Oh, yeah. But I still. Oh, it looks it does so look not. fantastic. It really, it pops, it really presents it? well. Yeah. Oh man, I found I found my thing for today. Look at oh. that! <laughs> Look at that Joker. That's all. You, if I saw those, <laughs> eighty nine okay, Joker. Joker. They're amazing. All this Batman stuff here, as well. It's Batman from all eras as well. That's the thing. It's not just one lot of Batman. It's no. All the you know. You've got everything right, you know, and I love and these are these are cherry. Yeah. Um, just they're, they're not expensive, but they're iconic. Every they were cheap toys as a kid, so you've got those represented as well as some stuff that would have cost you as a child a lot more. Something like that Batman gift set. I mean, look at that, the triple pack. That would have been an expensive toy as a kid, and it certainly is expensive. Yeah. Now. What is this little thing in here? See, this looks like my kind of thing. This looks like a it's a Thundercats belt. <laughs> it's amazing. Look at that. Fantastic. See, these are the things I like, the weird little things. Where do you start? Oh, I love that set. Yeah. The snowman set. I always... It's the only way you can get him, isn't it, in this set? The only way you can get him, yeah. snowman, yeah, because that was the one that they, you know, if they'd done one. Oh, if I mean, they'd done a big one. Oh, mate, imagine, because, oh, oh, oh. you know, you've got to think about snowman. He's, he's a big, oh, he's a big he's lad, a isn't he? He's a great figure, yeah. He's a big figure. So imagine getting a snowman out for him. I remember you had a loose one of these and I regret not buying it. Yeah, I've had it all boxed time ago. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, that is nice. So that's, that's Harbour. That's Italian. That is so cool. That is awesome. Is it a shop window sticker? It's a sticker, yeah. Wow. Shop display sticker. There you go. Oh, it says on the label. Basically, shall I just read the label to you? <laughs> it's an Empire Strikes Back Harbour Shop window sticker. But that is gorgeous. I've never seen that. I just like uh, advertising stuff as well. Yeah, I do. Mm, it's yeah, super out. cool. I love the graded shelf talkers. I've never seen a shelf talker graded. That needs to be out of that box and, and on my on, shelf. I sat on the edge. <laughs> it's one of them. Shelf talkers, basically, in the old toy shops, 
They're just little folded over cardboard and they'd sit on the edges of the shelves that, with all your boxed Star Wars vehicles all stacked up on top. Yeah. I think as a collector, having a shelf talker on that shelf with yeah. everything around it, it looks fantastic. And I love this, just like straightforward. Toys are here. Yeah. <laughs> There's no messing about there. Good name for a show. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the, the early bird certificate package. This is the first thing you could send off for in the States. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it before. Basically, they didn't get the Star Wars figures out in time. So they released this early bird certificate package for Christmas as like a promise the kids would get these figures when they were ready. So it's basically an IOU. Yeah, basically, essentially, yeah. yeah. Not to be sold after December the 31st, 1977. Amazing. Yeah, it opens up to them as a display. So you'd have kept it. That's super rare. That's when the first 12 figures came. From 1977, they came in that shop display bin. And um, as far as I know, it's the only one being graded by Steve, the, the grader, so super rare. That is one of my favorite pieces. Yeah. You know, as a child, he didn't have a lot of money. And I always said as soon as, because Star Wars was my first film in 77 and I was seven year old. And I said, if I ever get any money, Star Wars, well, that's what got me started, Star Wars. So, And then obviously, the rest is a bit of history. I just buy a bit of everything, so. So indie stuff, for over here, we don't see it at all, really. So you've got mail away figures. Is this, was this Belloc? Yeah, Belloc. See, I'm not very good with them, you see. But the mail away figures are really cool. But look at the packaging on the back here. Absolutely fabulous. A bright yellow packaging, it's recognisable, isn't it? From Straight a mile away. off. You know at yeah. a toy fair, if you ever see that bright, that flash of that bright yellow packaging, it, it makes you quicken your pace. You're immediately like, <laughs> I want to go and buy whatever that is. And normally you ask about it, it's very expensive in the UK. And it's getting that way in the States as well now. Is there a tote in there? Yeah, there is. Is that him at the back? Yes, there is, right at the back. Oh, right, look at him, look at his little face. <laughs> All they need, to, they need to make a modern figure where his face actually melts like at the end of the film. How gross and amazing would that be? I think for me, I mean, I love seeing the actual indie figures themselves. I think, you know, it's sort of, there's a lot of Star Wars in there, obviously, with uh, Harrison Ford, but there wasn't many, but they, they were like shelf warmers. When I first started selling toys, you could pick these up fairly easily. In fact, they were one of the cheaper lines to buy from the States and get over here. But the indie figures have always had a bit of a premium. Themselves. They've just got a little bit more articulation than Star Wars as well, haven't they? Yeah. Got yeah. the bending knees. It's just, it's just such a, it's just so nice to see them. And the play sets are really intricate. They were really breaky, breaky. Um, particularly the, the Well of Soul set, that was always one of those ones you, it had so many small parts with it as well. So generally the ones you find, if they're complete, they're generally boxed and have not been used or have been set up by a collector. Because if you had it as a kid, there's no way. Half of that would have disappeared on your mum's hoover. <laughs> so one of the key things in any Thundercats collection is this guy for me. So the Stinger is nearly impossible to find loose complete. He's very, very, very tricky indeed. So the only one, because the wings are so breaky, the only way to really get one with unbroken wings is kind of by a card of one. I have had two examples of unbroken wings in my time, but they are extremely hard and I've had a lot of these. I always look for them. It was one of the first carded figures that I bought years ago that I knew was very, very special. I was like, oh, this is so cool. But you know what? As cool as this is and as brilliant as this is and as rare as this is, but there's something else down there that trumps it by a country mile. There you go. Now this, this really is a special item. The Lion-O Thunderwings. This is pretty much as, as hard as you can get, really, with the normal Thundercats line. They don't come up. This, well, I, I've seen one before, and I've got a funny feeling about it. Mark, is this the one I think it is? Yes, it's yeah. uh, the one you think it is. Years ago, I, I found this with a, with a guy which had a, a weird Michael Jackson collection and a couple of Thundercats. And he had this. Um, I think it belonged to a relative who passed, and. 
it got handled and I ended up selling it to another dealer. It was Chris Malvin at Metropolis. That's right. And then Mark, I assume you got it straight from Chris. Yes, I didn't want to get involved in Thundercats, um, but he said you won't regret it buying it. So I bought it and then as you can see, Thundercats went a bit mental. Yeah. So do, do you regret it? Uh, no. So the only one with regret in this room is me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's nice to have it back though. So this is the only one, as it would turn out, that I've ever seen and held. And it's also the same one that I actually owned. So it's, it's amazing to see it back. It's such a hard piece to find. And in this condition as well, it is absolutely stunning. I don't think there's too many of these left at all. I don't know, many, I don't know any other collectors in the UK with them. I'm sure there are some, but I don't know of any. In the three big things would be like that, Cat's Lair and Tongasaurus. <laughs> and well, we know about Tongasaurus. This really ticks every box as a grail. It is rare, it is cool, and there's so few of these left now. I mean, as far as grails go, I don't think it gets much bigger than this. This is so cool. We've got the uh, telescopic lightsaber Luke there. The first one they released had a longer telescopic lightsaber, but I believe it was too costly to make. But yeah, that's from the first figures that you would have got from the early bird. Final Cape Jawa. Now, I know we've been doing this a while. This is kind of almost standard fare. It's exciting to see one, but we see quite a few more vinyl Cape Jawas. But it's one of those pieces that well, I love these, but I have found quite a few of these in my time. But what I've never found, speaking of Jowers, is a Lily Leddy. Now, what's cool about the Lily Leddy is you've got a little separate hood. I mean, like, how, how did that not go up somebody's hoover? I have no idea. And then you've got, like, a different blaster. So this was the blaster more commonly found with, like, the, the Thai Pilot and uh, the Neen Nun figure. That is that mould, and it's just, it's just really, really cool. Oh. I'd swap my vinyl cape for one of them any day. Yeah, I, yeah. Put, you, you just don't see it, <laughs> you don't do you? See it. Oh man, I'm going to make some phone calls to America today. It's going to get expensive, isn't it, this? Any chance of finding me a little daddy? <laughs> <laughs> if you had any of this stuff in here in your shop, you'd be extremely proud. Mm. I mean, just down here, we've got an Endor Chase set. And then we've got the Combat set at the back. Try logo boxes as well. So these were UK market boxes. And you just, yeah, it's just cool. Look at that. So, A-Team. Obviously, Gav won't discuss these because he hates the A-Team. I don't hate the A-Team. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is Argentinian. I'm, as, if anybody watches this regularly, they know I'm a big fan of Argentinian stuff because it's always weird. They find whatever is lying around and vaguely make it look like it. And that's what they've done here. But it's not just South American stuff that does that. Here we have, this is Giesval, which is Spanish, I believe. And they've put an A-Team logo and obviously sort of, it looks like it's been sort of almost glued on the top here. Uh, a nice little uh, fin on the top. Um, but it's a Mercedes van. The kind of you find you know you snap on man driving. This is not sort of the uh, the uh, A team American A team van. BA doesn't look impressed though, does he? So Star Wars fans, you're not the first guys that did the variant thing. No, no, no. The diecast guys are way ahead of you, and we've got some variations of Batmobiles here. This is more your standard later fare. But then we've got a nice Wild Wheels version here. Just the wheels are slightly wider but it gives it a sort of real muscle car stance. It looks really cool when you see it out of the box. I had one of these as a kid and I played with it to death. It was brilliant. I lost all the figures straight away. All the glass was broken and everything. So it's nice to see them all together. We've got more as well because we've got the gift sets at the back here. You've kept off the early stuff though, Mark. Or have you got those hidden away? No, no, I just, like I said, I just buy what I see and, yeah. you know, what takes the fancy. Yeah, and again, another Batmobile which I'm going to talk, pull out. This is, this is, again, this is South American. Very, very cool. Look at that. Look like Robin's trying to get it to go faster. He's in that stance, do you know what I mean? He's going, come on, come on. It's amazing. 
That's so cool. I love that. Anything with figures in. I think that's what I love about Batmobiles. There's always a figure in it. If there's not a figure in it, something's wrong. Speaking of variations, we've not even mentioned this Ghostbuster stuff, no, have we? You just stopped over and just, that. I've just noticed back here the Slimer with the Proton Pack. I didn't know there was two different colours of Proton Pack. Yeah. A red and a blue version. Yeah. And oh, this, this, it's probably. I love the classic Slimer, but this one, look at him. He's amazing. Eyes bug out, jaw drops. That's what you want out of your slime, that is. <laughs> and they're really expensive now. Even yeah. even loose, they're expensive. That's the thing, that, was one, that used to be one of them things, didn't it? That yeah, you, you pick, didn't even you pick... would pick those up at car boots. Yeah, you pick them up at car boots, <laughs> yeah. but then you think, oh, it's not the proper slime, though, so you wouldn't be able to yeah, sell exactly. it as easily. They were the ones you didn't, they kept them in a drawer for years. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Don't favorite. forget the 18 foot squirt. <laughs> Spitballs. One of my favorite things as well. There's actually two sets. There you go. You got your little staple off there. Look at him. He looks really weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. He's had he a pummeling. He has, hasn't he? But yeah, I've got these in my collection as well. Spitballs. By Intertech. Good stuff. Ooh. Not got one of these. Not had one of these. Oh, yes. Like this. <laughs> It's just like the set. It's, the set, it's just like it's been taken off a really big box. It's like they've gone. This is a, a small aisle. I've learnt, you see, to read the labels now. That's good, isn't it? A uh, small aisle hanger with the Transformers logo on it. It's really cool. You're right, though. It doesn't oh. just look like it's been sliced off yeah. the top of a box. It's like they've gone like that. We'll, we'll get this yeah. box three <laughs> times bigger than normal, and we'll just. It's really cool. Oh, I love that. Where did you pick that up from? Uh, a guy in America, I brought two Star Wars shelf talkers off him and he had this on there and I said, can you do me a deal on all three? And he, he said, yeah, I can. I, ain't gonna, I don't think I should tell you how much I paid for it, Joe. hundred dollars he let me have that for. Oh, and you're making me oh, sick. Oh, 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 oh. oh dear. But I've spent, yeah, I spent big on the two Star Wars things. That's amazing, man. I love that. Oh, look what I've seen down here. Not a toy. But, you know, you can all argue with me, but the best ever Joker, Cesar Romero. Look at that. That is a beautiful pig. That is a really nice painting. Is that done in pastels or something? No, no, it's oils or acrylic, maybe. Tell us about it. <laughs> I found it in a toy shop, um, and the guy who was the artist was actually handing it, said, would you like to buy it? Yeah. And I got offered it. Oh, um, so, amazing. And the guy is an artist, and, he, and, and he's worked on some of the 80s uh, oh, toy wow. films and uh, toy stuff, yeah. Well, I was born in 70, but yeah, I, I, you know, I grew up on that sort of stuff, so yeah. With a kapow and the, <laughs> you, yeah. you know, you just, I mean, you're so cheesy, but it was great. Oh, it was it's the great. best Batman, isn't it, by yeah. far. So much fun. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. So this is, we've just gone into another room because, you know, there wasn't clearly enough room, enough room in that area. So we're into the, uh, the dining room here. And we're just surrounded by all these lovely uh, signed photographs and action figures. Now, I'm not a fan of signed stuff at all. It just doesn't really do anything for me. I know other people absolutely love it. But for me, I don't care. But I do love the figures, and I love the way these are displayed. I think that, particularly, with the Boba Fett, Vader, and Lando all together, all signed, that just looks really cool. I really like that. John Ratzenberger. Yeah. Cliff from Cheers. <laughs> But I tell you what, not everyone's got this in their lounge. A full graded run. Look at that. We've got a few uh, customers who'd be jealous of these graded last 17. Especially at the moment, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just the graded last 17 on the bottom shelf there. It's just like one of those things you sort of... It's just there it is. And it was a thing in there <laughs> when we kept looking around in the other room. On the bottom shelf, there's all this absolute fire on the bottom shelf. You're going, oh my life, it's amazing. But it just, I suppose when you've got this much quality, it's hard to fit it all on the top shelf, isn't it? The last 17 are in the bottom because the whole display is put in order as per the poster above from start to finish. Oh, Mark's found us some things that we could maybe buy. Joe's very excited. He's having a look now. So the scramble van is not normally something I would kind of look at, but this is a bit special because it has the white trim around the wheels, which makes it quite hard to find like this. It really is just a massive chunk of plastic. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. Now we're talking. 
Klingon. It's got a split on the back. I've dropped it on Karen's head, believe it or not. <laughs> When, when everything was in boxes, yeah. yeah. When everything, really? When everything was in the dining room stacked up before I got the garage converted, yeah. It was up there, it drops on my head, bless her. Man, how did you get them back for that? <laughs> these are really cool. So these are adapted from Micronauts. Oh, yeah. Then they're, they're basically yeah. just Micronauts vehicles that they just re repurposed. Oh, it's yeah, really cool. The Bat Shuttle, that's one of these we sold. Billy Galaxy had one of these, of course. Mm. Spider-Mobile. It's in Marvel and DC, all in one toy line. Yeah. Look at those. So cool. This is one of the worst Batmobiles in the world ever. And a lot of people have fond memories of it, but I always think it's rubbish. Because there's so I, many good Batmobiles. I quite like this one. I know you do. <laughs> yeah. I know you do. And I, I said this because we're all so different, but look at that. Yeah, that's it's really like, clean. I've not seen one that clean. No, that, that's as good as it gets. Yeah. But what I'm saying is it's just been under a very low bridge. It's just yeah. you know, it's like it's and it's locked straight off, through the it? top. Yeah. You can fit that through a letterbox. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh, the equalizer. equalizer. Ewa Woo Wa. Edward Woodward. Yes. Lone Star as well. Was that a really violent program, the equalizer? Yeah. I seem to remember it was too on violent for you. On the middle of the night. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I wouldn't want it. Twenty five shot. <laughs> It's not an 18 foot squirt though, it's not your bag is it? Yeah, <laughs> give me an 18 foot squirt any day. Mm. <laughs> By surprise, we now have some stuff to buy, which is, you know, let's face it, I'm really excited about that. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just trying to, we're trying to work out a price mark for you that's going to be acceptable. Obviously I bought them at um, a reasonable price. Um, obviously I know you need to make money. Yeah, that's well, it's basically the idea, although, yeah, you know, well, you've been booking that trend recently. Yeah, I, you know, I do run a business myself, so it's all about making making a bit of profit. I've already told you what I think of the Batmobile. <laughs> I do like the, even though it is just a scramble van, it is, you know, it's a good version of it. And the speed jumper set, yeah, it's rather cool. I've not got one in the minute, so that's, uh, that's one to go with. Um, but Gav's throwing a bit of a curveball in Gav. <laughs> the Joker painting. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did like that, must admit. Yeah. Have you got a price, Gav? <laughs> well, in all honesty, I'd have been about a hundred quid. Oh, might be an idea. Say, <laughs> that's might be an idea. I'll tell you what, I'll tell Get him a scotch. Tell, tell, <laughs> yeah, a Remy Martin brandy would go down well <laughs> at this precise point. Uh, a tennis player. <laughs> Gav, Gav, um, I will sell you that painting. Oh, thank you. Is this, where, is this what normally happens now? Is normally Gav gets all the best deals and I have to pay top work. Okay, I'm going to make you an offer for everything because then I, had, I can kind of cover up the whole okay. piece per, price per item, which is better for the dealer, not so good for the buyer. Yep, yep. Just as one of those things that you sort of... Spin. You won't insult me, just... Oh, yeah. I don't know, don't tell you that. <laughs> you, you won't insult me. Uh, um, 700 quid. Deal. There we go. That was easy, wasn't it? I went in too high. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to have I've got my painting. 50-50. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's great. Oh, amazing. So we've seen an amazing collection today. And we've bought some toys as well. It doesn't really get any better than that, does it? Everyone's happy, including Gav. You know what? I actually thought about Gav and that Joker, oh. and I said to myself, if he turns up and he really, really wants it, he can have it. Oh, thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, well, that was unexpected, wasn't it? <laughs> I was expecting just to come and see Amazing Toys, not buy Amazing Toys as well. Although the Amazing Toys in there were amazing, weren't they? Really, really were. Man, what a great start to the day. Because you thought it was so cheesy, here's oh, a little mate. parting gift from me. Mate, that is so, <laughs> so kind. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that's really, thank you, mate. I will, I will love that forever. Okay. Oh, it's awesome. It will sit on my shelf. If nothing else, to annoy Gav because he hates the A-Team. <laughs> I don't <laughs> hate the A-Team. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. See you, See you later. Bye. Thanks, See Matt. Bye. Take care. Cheers. Take care. And of course, whilst travelling around the country, seeing various collections, we pass the odd toy shop along the way, and there's no better place to come to than this. Vintage Toy Monster. Come on, Gav!
All right, Ian. How, how you doing, Ian? How you doing, mate? All are you good? Well? All good, good thank you. you. How's it yeah, going? How you doing? Shop's looking as full as ever. Even. Even? To the gunnels. So yeah. how have you been? Have you been okay? No, it's been good. It's been really busy in here. It's, yeah? You know, we've had a lot more customers since your last uh, toy shop tour, which is good. Well, that's good. So that wasn't going to be one of my questions, has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it has, has changed. It has changed. We've had a lot more people travelling here, oh, uh, checking us out, as you do. Good. You know? Good. Yeah, it's good. It's been good. It's been really good. You know, so I appreciate that. Brilliant. So the show's worked for you. Yeah, it has worked for me. Oh, that's yeah. good news, that is. And it's good to watch. Yeah, good. It's good to watch. Sundays won't be Sundays without watching that. Well, hopefully we'll keep them coming. Yes. We'll keep them coming. Tune in after midday. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right, I want to look around and see if there's anything. Yeah, yeah. check it out. You might find some see treasures in here. You might not. Um, yeah. There's always treasure in here. Well, there's, there's always something in here. There's always yeah. different stuff in here. Yeah. yeah. Look at that for a strange item. The monkeys. Conjoined finger puppet. <laughs> Look at the faces on them. Just noticed there's a pull cord on it. it. It either talks or sings. That must be what's inside this massive bit here. A little uh, music box or something. So there we go, we gotta get into the cabinet. <laughs> oh, it's quite weighty actually, surprising. But what we thought was like a weird puppet type thing, it is. It is as well. You can put your hand in it. Yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna put my hand all the way in there. But yeah, there we go. Can I, can I pull yeah, that cord? It is it, it, it alright? Here yeah. we go. It's always worrying. Ooh. Here we go. How do you like my new toes? <laughs> Amazing. Try it again. Let's go again. How do you like my new toes? Oh, same one. Yeah, no, do do other One more, faces. one more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quit monkeying around. Look at that. That's a great item. <laughs> Great, yeah, it really is. Oh, look at these. These are little Tomy puzzles, like they're after pocket ears. Speaking of pocket ears, there's some pocket ears. But yeah, these were very good. We've got a shooting gallery, a little helicopter one where you pick the balls up. It's all about the balls in this shop, always, isn't it? <laughs> Just looking at this uh, Lost in Space electronic bean line rope, I love Lost in Space. Owen Allen stuff is kind of one of the few TV programmes that I've really got very fond memories of watching with my, my big sister at home. And the Remco version of this toy, in, in the programme it was, it was a silver robot, right? But the Remco version of this toy was a blue and red. I remember seeing one, Jim Stevenson, the legend that was, he had one on his stall. I went, oh, God, can I have a look, Jim? You know, it was way out of my price range. But I said, oh, go on then, Joe, lad. So I had a look, and it, I remember going out and going, oh, the colours are really weird. And they've recreated it here, so they were the colours of that one I saw. So it's nothing to do, and they called it the retro edition look. So this is a, 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 a new item, really. It's last yeah, year or so. Yeah, this yeah, came yeah, out. I think it's about. 18 months old, yeah. that maybe. So they've maybe done it in those more. same colours. Yeah. You know, that one that I remember getting out of the box and being disappointed by. But now I quite like it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, oh. I liked it. When it turned up, I I thought, oh, this is good. I'll get some more. Then they went, oh, they're out of stock now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. how it happens with that. I yeah. think they're diamond select. Now, this guy's still here, the Tongasaurus. It's paid off quite well for us in the episode, ironically. Ian was keeping it here for because he wants he doesn't really want to sell it he just wants somebody else to bring him on so he can sell one and uh, weird enough we got two didn't we after all this so worked out well for us anyway let's have a look at him was he the walking one slime ball oh no. you yes. squirt a slime out of it that's it yeah yeah oh no cap no no how much is he 15 it's yeah. not mine actually it's my cousin's I love him yeah I sold it to him and he went, he went, oh, I want to get rid of all this stuff now. So I'll put it back in the shop because I liked it anyway. Yeah. Where'd Ian, you? how attached are you to this little guy? Well, he's hanging in there, isn't he? He is, he's great. <laughs> I love basketball. And my son loves basketball. I love bendies. Like old really? school ones. Yeah, just, I don't know. We just bought a Paul Bearer. You know, the wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll see that. I'll see, I've had one yeah. of them, innit? Yeah, they're cool. I've had one of those. Just because you don't get another yeah, finger. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, 
Now, last time I was here, um, I'd kind of I'd spotted something in the cabinets, and, but then I forgot to ask about it, and it turns out it's still here, which is nice. I love me a Vincent, 55 quid. Yeah. He still works though. He's on the move. Still got a bit of life in him. He's on the move. He's these. I just have a soft spot for Vincent's. Any? I've never. You know, I've never seen the film, but I have a soft spot for these. Okay. Don't watch it. I think I'm leaving it at 55. No, don't worry. Don't worry. He's very cool though. There you go. That's 30. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can't we press that too? Yeah. Can we press that too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, see you next see time. See you again, guys. Well, that was great. Oh, yeah. Back on the road now, though, Gav. Put a Harlem Globetrotter in the van. I know, that's brilliant. <laughs>
They're also where they eat their food and where they get that sort of thing. Yeah, so they're, they're always with them. Yeah. It's really quite nice, enjoy. really. Yeah. She has kept that same face, that very similar. They've changed it slightly, haven't they? But all the way through. It yeah. was quite a sad day when Pedigree was gone mm -hmm. and Hasbro, I think it was it Hasbro, took over Cindy. Yeah. And they changed her altogether, her looks. She yeah. just didn't even look like Cindy anymore. And it didn't really take off. I don't think it no. took off that well. No. I think she's a much prettier doll because Barbie's like all glamour. Yes. And yeah. you know, bizarre proportions. But yeah, Cindy is just more she's sort of cute. It's more natural, yeah. isn't it? All the accessories in the different outfits, this little hat. So cute. And all the different hairstyles as well. I found an elf. <laughs> There's always an elf somewhere in a collection. Not for sale. When I started collecting, like my dad did, that's why I feel like starting collecting. But Beast Wars, that was sort of your... That was my childhood. Here we go, we got cabinets. It's a Japanese exclusive Japan, which is... They only made it from that country apart from America, because America started with Beast Wars, didn't they? Yes. Are they actual G1s you've got on there as well? That one's the real one, the real yeah. Megatron. That's the vintage one I got. Yeah, that's a real, so this is a Toy Story exclusive my dad got me. Cool. Lawrence has kindly said that we can go and look at the, his storeroom, basically. It's the stuff where he's getting it ready for shows, or it's stuff where it's his show stock, or it's stuff to go on his Facebook page, which is very popular, Toy Planet UK. I don't want to look yet. I want to wait until it's open. Ooh. Oh, it looks cool already, doesn't it? Oh, Ace. That R2 is the uh, part works one, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 1,200 quid to build it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my oh, my life. Right. Tubs and tubs of stuff. Tubs and tubs of stuff. Oh, my life. Matt, there's already stuff that you like here as well. This is going to be great, guys. <laughs> Look, there's a T-Rex. Did we sell that T-Rex the other day, Calf? Yeah, we did. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> yeah, I got three. Yeah, we did have, we've sold them all. Ooh. This is cool. So what this was, was after the programme had finished, years after, they somehow got, by the way, I think it's licensed. It looks like it might be licensed. I mean, if not, it's bold, because it's got Starsky and Hutch all over it. So let's assume it's licensed. And this came out way after it finished. This was like 80s. I'm a big hoarder for spares. Yeah. Because I, I used to sell spares and then it guaranteed a week later I will need that spare piece yeah. to complete something. So I stopped selling spares. This is why I've got so much. How much is the pulsar? I don't know. Oh, let's get it now. Everything's still sealed inside, it's never been used. <laughs> Dead spider on it. That's free. <laughs> you got a price on it? No. Well, let's put that in a pile anyway, I'll be interested in that. Oh, look at that. Oh, what are they? Oh, man. Frisbee. Oh. Beastman Frisbee. I think I've got a red one of them. Really? Yeah. It's so cool. Beastman Frisbee, because nothing says Beastman more than a Frisbee. A game of Frisbee, <laughs> I think you're going to think, oh, that's obviously Beastman's. He loves Frisbee. Look at his face, he loves it. <laughs> oh, my goodness me, that's so cool as well. It still there. works, but it's missing its little orange light on top of its roof. Oh, wow. Otherwise, it still works. That's such a shame. If you That's pull it backwards beautiful. and let it go, it talks as it's going along. So you normally come across the, the Batmobile version of this, but you don't come across the Kojak one. No, I was quite lucky a week ago. I picked up quite a few Kojak pieces, like the radio down there. That's, yeah, I saw that. That still works. It's with Kojak's voice. But is it only one radio? Yeah, Is no. It, have you got a set? No, no. It, it, it isn't a radio where you talk to each other. Oh. You press the button and it's Kojak's voice. Oh, so it says walkie talkie, but it's not a walkie talkie. No, it's no. just a. It's a toy. Yeah. It's still really cool, isn't it? Yeah. That's with his badge, his glasses, handcuffs, his lollipop. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. so cool. <laughs> Relive the excitement and suspense. Yeah, that might have to go in my pile. <laughs> that might have to go in my pile. Nobody's seen these items yet. Theo Kojak. Look at that. <laughs> and my dad's nickname was Kojak. He was, he, he looked like Telly Savalas. His brother was in the film. 
What, my dad's brother? No, <laughs> Kojak, <laughs> Kojak's brother was actually in the series. Oh, Stavros. Right. Stavros was his brother uh -huh. in real life. I like these, but I've been told these are not for sale. They make dolls and they'd, they'd all have, you know, kind of an action. Katie Copycat, she has a little desk and you draw and then she copies what you're drawing. Very clever. Palitoy. They knew what they were doing. Patty Painter. Look how cute that is, look. It's great. Just have, imagine having that set up. That'd be really sweet. That's saying all these things, they need to be in a, in a museum somewhere. An excellent Knight Rider wrist, wrist racer. racer. Very cool. <laughs> That's really nice, isn't it? How much you got on that? 35. 35. It would have been a little bit more, but it's got, it had a slight crack on ah, the top there. Right. And I'll put a little bit of tape on it, protect it to stop it from getting worse. But otherwise, it's still a, you know, in good condition for its age, because it's a big bubble which could get damaged easily. Yeah. Oh, could you do any on it? I could, yeah. Mm, 25 on it? Go on, to you. Thank you, awesome. There we go, Knight Rider wrist racer. Fantastic. Every kid as a child wanted one of these. See, Matt's nodding, <laughs> he knows. Um, oh, it's that box one. No, I didn't put a price on it. It's got no inners, right? No, no you haven't got the see-through bubble in it. Okay. You haven't got that, you know. So I've had to make an inner for it, like that, yeah. to protect it, to make sure it's okay. It stays, you know? yeah. It stays, well, it shows yeah. an extra level of care, Lawrence. You know, same, or... I had no bubble with that, so I had to make oh, a that's, base. That's good yeah. I made a base, put his feet through, strapped him down, yeah. so in transit, it's safe. How much is the Diplodocus? That's 150. 150. Can I ask how much it would be for the four box Dino Riders, the smaller ones? The, the Diplodocus. A couple and the of them are not complete. Okay. But we have the technology, you see. <laughs> have you got the bits for it? I think we've got some of the bits. That's those. the only thing I haven't got spares for. Dino Rider, because they're breaky breaky. It's, yeah. Breaky breaky. It's the plastic they were made out of. Yeah, yeah. They're, it's very brittle. Yes, definitely. Definitely. But I'd be interested in a, in a bundle deal on the on the on, on the, the dino stuff on the six okay. box dino riders. How much is that jab of the hook? I think it's one eight five. One eight five. Obviously, it's been out because yeah. I've you know cleaned it and sealed it. But those two are still original. He's nice and clean. Right. He is. So pop that in the pile. We'll see what we can do. This is the bit I've been most excited about today. So it's been like sort of, I mean, for me, it's always all about buying toys. I love seeing toys, but if I can't buy them, there's always that bit of me that goes, but I want to be able to buy that. And sometimes when you can't, it's kind of worse. So yeah, I'm well excited to be here. Ah, uh, Lawrence. Right, just checking up on my prices. Yeah. What I can do, the whole lot. You want all, all of it? All the six. Yeah, all the so six. The, the four box, smaller ones, and then the two big ones. 450 I can do it for. 450? The lot. I'll do that. 450, that sounds good. That, you, you, was it, you interested in those other two down there? <sighs> Only if they're very cheap because of the issues with 500. them both. 500. 500 50, all in. 550 for the lot. Five, oh, 500 all I made, definitely. Yeah. Five, oh, that was 150, wasn't it? Yeah. I can, I, I, I so can do, do it for 550, 550 for the lot. All my Dino Raiders, plus that loose one the as loose well. The loose one there. Yeah. Yeah, go on them. Yeah? Yeah, I'm good with that. Thank you, mate. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So, mate, another deal done. Brilliant. 550. Fantastic. Got to sell some Dino Riders. Yeah. Hey! So, Lawrence, we've already sorted the deal on the Dino Riders. We know where we are on the wrist racer. I'm interested in... All of this. All, a deal for all of that. Right. And the Pulsar, I'm not 100% sold on, so if you can look at a deal with the Pulsar and one without. All but a couple of pounds, that's 360 quid there. I can do that. I can do it for 330. 330? 330, yeah. Because I, I know what that stands me in and, and that. And yeah. there isn't, I know there isn't a lot in it. Other. Right, okay. And with that, I can do it 400 quid. 400 quid. A lot. 
What about Java Playset and the Robocop? Just those two. That one? Yes. Can I knock a ten off each? 230. 230 for the two. That's cool, that's really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is going to make the customer very happy. We're not going to take much out of this. And it's always nice to see the Jabba in that box. So, yeah, happy with that. First time I've ever had a Shears box. Yeah. It, it, in 30 years. Yeah, I've had loads of it's them. It's always, always Jedi boxes. Yeah, 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 I always pick them up. That's great. Right, let's save you some money. We've bought some stuff. Very happy with that. We've loaded the van. We've paid our money and we've got to thank Lawrence and uh, the family for having us. Thanks very much. That's okay. And, and uh, every, everyone's collection today. Yeah, and we've left a mess as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> which standard. You know, yeah. That's how we roll. Yeah. Right, let's get out of here. Okay. See you later, folks. And you. Nice see you see you. Later. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. So am I. Dave and Camilla. Great customers. Really good customers. Yeah. Like good friends of the shop as well. Dave's and got his YouTube channel. He has Vintage Toy Rush, yeah. which is excellent. Oh, it is. He's very patient as well. I'm, I haven't got that patience. I think I'm just like I want to, I want to get stuff now. No, he's good in it. He? He'll yeah, have he's like patient. the incomplete yeah. figures and he'll gradually build gradually them up. Gradually build them up. Yeah, it can be a good way of doing it if you're willing to do it. But it's, it's a long game. It is the long game. Yeah. It plays the long game, which is good. Morning, Camilla. How you doing? This is a bit of a difference. Sorry. Go on, what, this way. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a Golf GTI. Mark 1. It is a Mark 1 Golf oh, GTI. Oh, that's cool. 1983, this guy. Mars Red. It's all original. Look at that. Um, a little bit dirty right now because it's out of action. I've got a fuel leak in the fuel tank, which needs fixing. The Automobilia was, this is actually pre toys so this is the yeah. kind of stuff I collected beforehand. That Bosch sign is amazing. Yeah, is, that, that, was a, that was a present from Camilla. That The frame I built, That's so I amazing. built that frame for it. I also built the uh, aluminium frame for the oh, rally wow. sign. Uh, and I do have a little trick, so if I, no. if I click this switch on here, Oh, that's cool. <laughs> the bigger you go, and the better, and the better really. The bigger, the better. So anyway, we're not taking the golf out for a spin then. No, unfortunately, it's oh, out of action. I've, it's, it's registered off off the road at the moment. You, we just literally were saying this morning. Mm. Joe's on a bit of a car fix at the minute. This is dangerous territory for me. Oh dear! Don't let me near my phone or eBay, will you? <laughs> Come on, let's get him out of it. It's gone up some toys, something I can't afford. <laughs> This is a good looking room. This is ace. <laughs> oh, this is ace. This is great. Oh. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is cool. This is what I call the well, imaginatively named collection room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where it all happens. I'm next to a Star Wars collection, and I'm not even looking at that because it's all so much other stuff to see. I know Rambo figures are oh, yeah. your yeah, passion. I love them. So we've got some variations in here. And we've got some Argentinian sort of hard, hard to find stuff. Yeah. So we've got Dr. Hyde. Uh, yeah, this is Dr. Hyde uh, from the Series 2 uh, Rambo line. These are pretty hard to find. I don't know how many you've seen, but I, I don't see many of them. I actually did get this from the US. Uh, it's really nice condition, this one. Uh, but he does have a party trick, which is there's a little button on the side. I think it's the only Rambo figure that has a battery in it. And if you press that button, Oh, look at that. That is awesome. I think that's one of the best tricks of a, of a toy ever, to be honest. It's great. It's, it's really awesome. Good, isn't it? yeah, the, really the only way cool. to get one in that condition, generally, and one that works, is mm. taking off a card. Yeah. yeah. Which I know to a lot of people, if you're a Star Wars guy, you'd be going, oh, you can't yeah. say that. But the Rambo cards suffer so much. They get beat up. They're really hard to find mint Rambo cards. And because of them being where he was when you know argentina yeah it's one of those things that quite often the cards are battered and if so you can pop them off or they've already tried to pop themselves off and then you can yeah this one this one wasn't on card when i bought it i think this might even be a sales uh, wow. example i'm not sure see the rambo range everybody thinks of as just basically rambo maybe a couple of the other guys you know Troutman and whatever um, but there are a lot of different characters, aren't there? Yeah, well, of course, Rambo is an 18 film, right? Oh, mm -hmm. um, but there was a cartoon. I've never seen it, obviously. Rambo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a cartoon, a Force of Freedom cartoon. So all these characters come from there. Um, it's great. So you, there's quite a few variations of Rambo yeah. himself. He looks awesome. Uh, 
Colonel Troutman's one of my other favourite uh, figures in there. Um, obviously, a, a character from the film. One of the things about the Rambo figures is they have so many accessories. They do. Oh, that's what I love about it. And they can't hold them all, either. No. Uh, <laughs> very, very. I always find that frustrating. Yeah. You know, you're thinking from a toy dealing point of view. Yeah, that's, is that you, that's. You put a figure on display and you go, oh, where am I going to put all this other <laughs> stuff? Exactly. I just That's what I love about the Rambo line, actually, is, is the accessories. So, yeah. one of the things I do like to do, I, I don't necessarily call myself a completionist in terms of I want everything from a, from a, from a given line. But when it comes down to an individual figure, I do like to have a complete figure. All of these figures, well, yeah. apart from maybe uh, uh, X-Ray, have all of their, all of their uh, accessories. He's a really, really hard find. I've never seen him in the UK. I think that some of the Series 2 were in the US for a very short time, because I think there are some cards that are US cards. Right. But mo most of the time you find these in Argentina. Yeah. But I don't think they ran for very long at all, which is why they're so no. hard to find. And what I've noticed about the figures as well, the Rambo figures are tinkers for going yellow, aren't they? Particularly yeah. the, the lighter coloured figures. Yeah. Mm. And both of the figures that normally go, the variation Rambo and the ninja guy, the yeah. white dragon, these are normally, like they've been stored on the surface of the sun, they're normally yellowed, really yellowed. And finding one in anywhere near this condition is a very hard find. This I've been looking for for a while, and you talked about condition of cards. This is how you normally find these cards. Yeah. This is a Series 2. Yeah. Um, whip Action General Warhawk which yeah. I've been looking for a long time. He's really hard. Yeah. So this is uh, Glass Light or Glass Lead. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I've always gone with Glass Light. Glass yeah. Light, yeah, I think so too. Um, a Brazilian release, I think this yeah. is. Uh, so I may take this off the card because... He's already, uh, he's already on his way. He's there, already right? on his way, yeah. yeah so free it was, kind of, it was sliding out. It was yeah, slide yeah, out yeah. anyway. Yeah. So I really want to get this off you the wouldn't, You wouldn't damage the card by taking that out. No. Because so, no. he's already on his way. The only thing you'll have exactly. to be careful of is just any rubs as you take mm. it. Exactly, right? exactly. But uh, yeah, these are the yeah, foreign cards. All those figures I've had or I've currently got, that one I've never had. You've never had that one? Never had that one. Wow. I, I've, I have to say I've been looking for this a long, long time. And yeah, this was another US purchase. So this is one of your grails. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there because is. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't really like the original General Warhawk. He's kind of a he's a bit double, dull, isn't he? He's a yeah. dull denim oh, guy. Yeah, he's like, yeah. yeah, it's Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, this is great to have this figure at last. There's some amazing stuff in here. We said we'd bring you grails, and we've already spotted one, haven't we? And there's more as well. Over in the corner, just down there. Is something that I absolutely love, and it's always on the hit list of any serious toy collector. It's a Robo Skull. You'll see this painted on our shutters at the shop, but it's been a while since I've had one. Produced locally to where we are in Leicester, it was produced by a Pally Toy at the Colville plant just around the corner from us. And man, he's just so cool. Look at it. Look at his face. If you're an American collector, particularly, this is as hard as it gets. This was the, the Action Force TIE Fighter, as it were, but just so much cooler. It's like a horror movie TIE Fighter. Just amazing. And I've got parts for this, and you'll often see these, just when you're going and buying bits and bobs and collect, you'll see all these parts. So examine this, because if you're in the UK and you're buying um, big toy collections, you won't probably find a complete one all the time, but you will find bits of it. This was UK only. So if you're an American collector, this is one of the grail pieces because G.I. Joe was huge and Action Force was our version. And, but this was unique for the UK market. In fact, they've just reproduced and done some amazing work and brought out another Robo Skull in America, um, which we've ordered a couple of those, but you know, because <laughs> you, you can't help yourself, but it, it's just brilliant. I love it. On shelves full of amazing things, I found the shelf for me. Japanese tin toy. I recognise a few of the characters here. We've got, Z got Godzilla at the back here. King Ghidorah. Is this it? Is this a Cayman Masked Rider? Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 And there we go. For this teapot head guy. <laughs> Who's this, Dave? Oh, crikey. Um, <laughs> Robo, I think he's called Robo Poo. He's actually a Poppy or Poppy yeah. character from the 1970s. Um, obviously, based on one of the Japanese. Uh, Anime. Yeah. Look at this guy. We've got his box at the back there as well. Look at him. What is he? Is he a fox? So like a robot fox? Yeah, there's a fox and a... a look. Oh, we're losing bits. Alright, right. Right, we've got it. A little string tail there. Just a little bit. little addition. And that guy. 
what's going on there? <laughs> He's like some kind of flat fish man or something. <laughs> Don't ask me what character he is. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> he's amazing. He's cool. Yeah, that was actually a gift, uh, an awesome gift that. This guy's a bit, a bit funky actually. But um, yeah, it's all die cast, ball mark. Um, so you should see underneath, where is it, on his foot? Let me get it, there should be a, a ball or something. Yeah, there's a ball mark there, literally on his foot, um, 1970s. And then he opens up at the front oh, if his wow. head doesn't fall off. <laughs> he's a bit uh, <laughs> temperamental, this guy. Oh, um, no. I don't have the missiles, but uh, it files missiles, of course, as the, all of these old Japanese toys do. And then in here, it's so small, but there's actually, <laughs> you need a magnifying glass, but oh. this is, it looks a little a little suspect, doesn't it? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're dubious, they don't really think about that, yeah, do they? They do, but in there are tiny little men. Tiny little guys, yep. yeah. Yep. Oh, such play value, they just threw everything at it. It's like, no, it's not just like a Godzilla, you got all this going on as well. Yeah, this is G basically, another Japanese classic. Um, the, the great thing about this figure is it's all magnetic. Yeah. So you can just pull off the arms and interchange them with other figures as well. Of course, it's got the <laughs> firing missile yeah. as well. I have to have uh, a missile they, on there. Yeah, it has to have a missile, yeah. But I, I mean, it looks fantastic. Colours are awesome. Oh, he does, he pops. Yeah, he really it? pops, yeah. Is it this one? I can't remember now which Watch lever out, it is. Joe, it's, <laughs> in the eye. it's all going <laughs> And they shoot they so do. far. <laughs> They're flying, flying everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole kind of history going on here because but this is a Henshin Cyborg rider set. But you can see on the, on the box cover there, this bike, and then the Henshin Cyborg is sitting on the bike. So these Henshin Cyborgs are basically 12 inch oh, uh, right. figures. Fisher. Yeah, and they're, yeah. They're, actually, they're actually based on, or actually are the same mold as the original G.I. Joe 12 inch figures. Uh, so Takara, I believe licensed the uh, the, um, the Hasbro G.I. Joe came out with a Combat Joe in Japan uh, and then decided, because they're Japanese of course, mm. we'll make him transparent and yeah, put some course. really cool pieces yeah. inside. They also created other figures, so then you get this smaller version of the Henshin Cyborg, um, which they call, I guess it's the boy, the 8-inch version of that. Again, transparent with all the innards showing, yeah. really cool. And that was the forerunner, of course, with the Dennis Fisher yeah. Cyborg, Android and Muton. That's right, so Dennis Fisher then yeah, licensed that, and so there's a Dennis Fisher example there. They call it Cyborg, or I think they called it from Dennis Fisher. Yeah. And then you have this, which is one of my favourite pieces as well, the Jaguar. Yeah. So that's such a cool piece. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I've not seen one of those. I've only ever seen, I've only ever had part of it. I guess in the mid 70s or whenever it was, they miniaturised all these figures um, and came out with uh, Microman. Um, so, uh, and then, and then of course, Mego licensed yeah. Microman from Takara, and that's where you get Micronauts yes. for the US. Uh, and then you get distributors like Airfix, of all people, mm. uh, distributing Micronauts in the UK. I, yeah, it's always unusual to see Airfix yeah, it, on a toy line. Exactly, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Um, so then you get, you know, so now you've got these little time travelers, which are essentially just miniature versions of the Henshin Cyborgs with amazing articulation on them. Uh, they do go floppy after a while mm -hmm. and their chrome heads often go. Yeah. But uh, I love these guys. It's such a nice collection. They're all in such great shape. Well, we've seen a bit of we have. a bit of indie already, haven't I we? So we've got another tote. You know, if anybody was wondering why you can't find Indiana Jones at the moment, it's because we've seen it all on this, uh, <laughs> this episode. On this episode. <laughs> Amazing. So these larger figures, Dave, these are not Kenner, are they? They're, uh, no, those are LJN. So these are the LJN yeah. figures. So LJN made Thundercats, Tiger Sharks. When I said the other day that the Kenner ones are so hard to get, these are even harder. And although I prefer the look of these on, on, on card, I prefer the look of the Kenner ones. I think because you don't see them, these are just somehow a little bit more special. I love the fact he's got like sort of a it looks like a sort of homemade whip, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> but you can tell it's LJN because it's got the same sort of wrapping as they did for the Thundercats and, figures. And the rope is like the uh, Pumaira. Yeah, that's right. Whip. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. It's a shame they only did the three figures. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but it's, so these are in line with the, uh, the Temple of Doom release. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, such a. It's so cool to see, and the the horse you you really don't see that at all. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a 
carded horse. No, you've had loose, haven't you? But yeah, but not, not carded. carded. So, so far I've seen a car that I've liked and I'm now seeing Indiana Jones stuff I'd like. It's terrible. <laughs> so the question that every viewer wants to know while watching this, and they're probably screaming at this at the telly. Dave, Dave, what's in your drawers? What's in my drawers? <laughs> Let me show you. Wow. <laughs> hey team. Um, I, I, I must say, I've got, you need to come around and do my filing at home. <laughs> the bills. It's like, we run a business and we don't have a filing system like this. It's just in a pile. I, do you know what? It took me forever to work out how to store these damn things. But this good, was the best way, way of doing, doing it. it that yeah. Is though, yeah. And then uh, basically we have, well, whichever figure you want to have a look at mm. is in here. So I think in all my years of looking at toys and buying toys, I've, I've never seen a collection stored in this way. <laughs> it really works though. <laughs> yeah, because the cards, you know. Yeah, well, I don't, I, yeah, I couldn't, how else could you store this stuff? Look at that, look how Amy. clean that card is. See, I mean, <sighs> I mean, they made a pig's ear of that figure, didn't they? They have. This yeah. is this is a terrible figure. Reality, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toy. That's just yeah. It doesn't work. Does yeah. It? Well, look at Star Wars. Yeah. This isn't filed as neatly. First of all, we have some supernaturals. Very so, cool. Nice. Obviously, with the holograms, there was a time when you know, holograms were the thing. Oh, in the eighties. I used to love holograms. So stuff. To yeah. That's what got me into supernaturals. Actually, yeah. Yeah. they were spooky. Very expensive yeah. to produce. Yeah, I do love the card art on these. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are great. The thing you'll always find with him, if you find a loose example, is that part is always broken. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a really, really gold plastic. It's just a recipe for disaster. Mm, exactly. But this is the full run of the Visionaries carded wow. um, in really nice condition. So I, I, <laughs> I don't know, should I grade these or not? I don't know. It's up to the, it's it's personal, the choice. It's personal yeah. choice. It's, if uh, there were mine, I don't know. If I'd you were keeping them for the acrylic this, cases, I think acrylic cases yeah. is probably yeah. the way to go. Maybe we yeah. should just put them in acrylic cases. Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you were, it's kind of like it's it's up to each person to make that decision. Mm. You know, there's no right or wrong because yeah. it's toys. It's up to mm. each exactly, person. Exactly. Exactly. But these do look wonderful when they're when you lay them all out. I mean, there's eight of them in total. Yeah. I've never really looked at this card art. I didn't realise each one had a different. Uh, yeah. yeah. They, they all had their own totems. Some of the holograms work better than others. But they, they are pretty cool. I do love these. Yeah, they're an amazing figure line. So, yeah, I really should do something about it. I, I mean, <laughs> there's probably people watching now going, "What? They just why in are the they cupboard? Just, yeah, why are they in the cupboard? <laughs> they're, in the, they're in Dave's drawers." <laughs> This sort of collection that you sort of every every time you look on a shelf, there's something else. You spot something else, and you kind of go, "Oh wow, there's this as well." I've just looked down there. There's a load of Tron stuff down there. We've not even spoke about that. It's amazing, and you don't see Tron stuff loose, complete like those are. I love these figures because they're slightly translucent, so when you get the light on them, mm. uh, they're brilliant. And the the little discs, the little yep. data discs, uh, they glow in the dark. They, they do like, glow in the dark. Yeah, yeah. and they're, but they're always lost. Uh, one of these is a repro disc but one is original um, and they fit on the back actually there's a little hole on the back oh. so the disc can sit in the back of the figure really cool and of course they also had the light cycles in the range yeah. this opens up and of course you can put the yeah stick them in there, right around. there we go. This one's a bit, there we go. stick the figure in although the figure is tight in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a a pull cord, although this one, oh, oh, oh there, there you go, there's, face there's, face so there's the A-team just gone. <laughs> I, I, I demonstrated this and snapped it. Yeah. Ah, it's just yeah. like, oh, it's so annoying. Um, but yeah, pull cord goes in there yeah. and it flies and across the room. Yeah. So these are often damaged because mm, of that. Because they hit, yeah, exactly, skirting yeah, boards. Exactly, and, yeah. yeah. Continuing what's in my drawers, <laughs> another box here, another filing box. And then this one we have, uh, Police Academy. <laughs> so this is this is an odd line. It's by Kenner, so obviously a major toy company of the time, released in the eighties, uh, associated with the Police Academy cartoon. So like a lot of the films, they had associated cartoons. So a lot of these figures are actually based on characters from the cartoon. So they released quite a number of series of figures. So there's actually quite an extensive range of uh, figures and play sets and vehicles. But I've got a few of the carded figures here. This is actually not my collection, this is DCB Tunes. Uh, so I'm gonna show this on her behalf. Uh, let's see what we've got in here. So there's quite a lot of these sort of villains, 
numbskull here. Very strange looking characters. It's kind of a mixture of sloth from the Goonies yeah, and cone yeah, heads. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, although it's from Kenner, I would personally, I would class it as a sort of, you know, like a second class line from them. Uh, but they're still today, I think, great to well, collect. I think the, you can see that association with like the Beetlejuice line, yep. the Ghostbusters mm. line. So it's got that, that, that feel of it. Of it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I've never seen that. That's so cool. So with this then, hazardous smell of dirty laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, contaminated zone. That's amazing. Imagine being a kid. You would yeah. hang that on your door, wouldn't you? Yeah. I bet very few of these actually survive because you'd be straight off the corner. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they I've, had, I've never yeah. seen that before. They had a few of those. I think they had like uh, handcuffs. Oh, yeah, wow. All sorts of stuff that you could play yeah. around with. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a police line that you could unfurl between two chairs, apparently. Because <laughs> that's how all police lines work. <laughs> if, you, if you notice on the corner, you've got this free Captain Harris mail away. So obviously yeah. Kenner, back in the day, loved their mail away. Yeah, uh, so you just collect the tokens and send off. And if you look down here, this... There he is. There he is. So this is Captain Harris. This one is a little faded, but... Uh, and he's missing a figure. Uh, so he's missing an accessory as well. But they're just so hard to find. This is another US purchase. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realise, but we've got two of these. Willing to let one go? Yeah, of course. Uh, Dave, what do you think is a fair price for Lavelle Jones and his bullhorn? I have no idea what the prices are in the police academy these days. The last days. one I saw so was around about the fifty pound mark. Yeah. Wow. At the moment. Okay. So what would you like from me for it? Uh. For you, thirty. Thirty's fine. Yep. We'll do thirty. Thanks very much. Thanks, Camilla. You're, You're a star. <laughs> Another surprise buy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks guys, that's been amazing. That was awesome, thanks Dave, thanks Camilla. That oh. was great, good to oh, see you. Good to see you as well. How good yes. to, I don't know, I'm shaking hands. Yeah. 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 There we go, yes, yeah. goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> it's been an awesome day, I've loved it's having you around here. Oh, thanks mate. And you got to buy some And I got to buy some as well, <laughs> so you know. I think I've actually bought more stuff through this one trip than I have <laughs> the whole of Toys One Tour. tour. <laughs> Let's go, see you soon guys. So here we are, at the end of this special. I know, I'm a bit sad to leave it, if I'm honest yeah, with you. It's been good, isn't it? It's been great fun. We've seen a lot of cool toys. Oh, what's been your favourite, then? I can't really get past that Thunderwings Lino. <laughs> it was nice, wasn't it? It's just such a hard piece. It's just... And I've got regrets over it, the fact I sold it and I had it. And how, much, how much was it when you sold it? About two grand, I think. And even then, that surprised me. I don't think it was yeah. worth that. But now... I don't know, I know it's sold just after that for four and a half grand. You. So I think now, I don't know, eight minimum? I don't know, eight grand, 8,000 pounds for an action figure. That's it seems <laughs> mad, and I don't, I don't think that's a mad estimate. I think that's quite conservative for what it is. I don't know. Oh, that's nuts. But it's just, yeah, so I've got regrets over that. So I think that. I really like the Cindy's. Like you walked in, boom, Cindy's. I would love this collection. All different faces, all different outfits. I was definitely more you than me, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It was a shame that all of our other stuff was stashed away. Yeah, it would have been yeah. nice to see that, like the big greenhouses. And yeah, the, all the weird, like the weird stuff. The weird stuff. <laughs> the weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right, and, the, and the pink boxes, all the pink. Yeah. Oh, I see brown sort of bathroom furniture in Cindy's <laughs> yeah. eyes. Yeah. And you always want to see a Cindy toilet. You do, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always a source of endless amusement. Yeah, isn't but it? for me, like sheer wow factor, just walking in, like, boom, there yeah. it is. Yeah. I still, and I love Dave and Camilla's collection as well. I mean, it's yeah. like, where do you, this is the point, there's so many collectors we there's need like, to go and, and there's see. loads out there. There is. We're just gonna have to find more. We are. But, I, <laughs> it's just when. When are we gonna do it? Oh, we'll work it out. Come on, let's go and have a look. Yeah, let's get the roads down, get, get, some, get some work done. <laughs> get back out on the road, Gav. Action. Hello, we're back. I'm Joe. I'm Gav. From Leicester Vinci's Toy Shop. We couldn't wait for episode two. Ah, Hello, we're back. I'm Joe. I'm Gav. And this... <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't wait to do series two. And apparently, neither could you. 
<laughs> I'm Joe. <laughs> I'm Gav. And we're from Les Da Vinci's Old Toy Shop. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't wait to do the episode. <laughs> and we're from Les Da Vinci. <laughs> from Les Da Vinci's Toy Shop. We couldn't wait for episode two. Oh, well, what's special it. about it is it's 14 takes in. <laughs> Roll, Roll the, the titles. titles. That's good. I think we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this special episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, click stuff, and we'll see you next time for another Toy, Toy Shop, Shop On Tour. Tour.